recognize the base, I think. Wait. You look funny. You... Ha ha. Hey everyone, and welcome to another Steam Next Best video. And in this one, we are going to check out and explore the crazy world of the altars. I decided to do a slightly different style of video for this one. The nature of this game and how unique it is meant that I felt that it deserved some more attention and a more polished video to show it off. Now, before we go on, if you are new to the channel and you're enjoying this video, please make sure you like it. Make sure you comment down below and make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell and all that other good stuff. So this is the altars then, and these are my thoughts. Let's dive into this and let's check out the latest game from 11-Bit Studios. Stemming from the brains behind two of my favourite games in recent years, Frostpunk and This War of Mine, 2024 promises to be a very big year for the Polish-based company. Frostpunk 2 and the altars are coming this year with the Thaumaturge, Indica and the Invincible already released this year to widespread acclaim. But The Altars is quickly becoming their most anticipated game of the year, promising to blend base building, survival elements, as well as a deep and interesting narrative into a sci-fi world filled with meaningful decision making with the threat of consequences for making bad choices. You play as Jan Dolsky, a builder with a troubled past. He finds himself working for Ally Corp and is part of a group of space adventurers seeking out a powerful and rare resource. The end result is a game that stimulates and tests you in multiple different ways as you navigate the trials and tribulations of our main protagonist's difficult situation that looks highly likely to get more complicated as the game goes on. The game begins with chaos reigning as you have clearly crash landed on an unfamiliar planet. He sets off desperately trying to find his crewmates, however one by one as he comes across them, he finds them deceased and eventually realises that he is all alone. We then get a glimpse of this base, a giant wheel with what looks like a suspended set of containers in the middle of it, which is revealed to be our home. We have a little bit of time to explore and look around and we make contact with someone in the communications area, but due to technical difficulties, the signal is so poor that you only get a few words of each message. Unfortunately, most of the words you do hear seem to signal that there is some impending doom on its way. No, 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 not, not that doom, but certainly an unwelcome situation is on its way to your doorstep if you don't get a move on and prepare yourself. Then it's off to gather resources, and it's one particular resource that is of most interest to this mission, Rapidium. This resource is effectively a radioactive element that accelerates cell growth at an incredible level. And this, dear listener, is where the game really kicks into gear. Forget the cool base building elements, forget the fact that at one moment I thought the game was going to break out into some kind of Factorio satisfactory style game with base building and factory production line creation. The Rapidium is the key component that links everything together in this game. After some back and forth with the corporation, it becomes very clear that we cannot get out of this situation ourselves without some help. So we clone a sheep. She's called Molly, and she looks delicious, uh, cute. Jan is then told to go and see his mind records, which introduces us to something incredibly cool called branching. We see a timeline of key events from Jan's life dating back to his childhood. Key moments in his life where decisions meant the journey to where he is on now was plotted. He is obviously shocked that the computer has this information in the first place but he is then convinced to attempt to make a new human, a clone of Yan. Picking a key moment in Yan's life where a different decision or a difficult conversation that could have taken him in a different way, perhaps just having the balls to do something different, it would have caused his path to venture in a different direction. So you pick a point and you clone yourself and you are presented face to face with, well, yourself. In this example, he chooses the point at which he could have stood up to his abusive father and didn't as the point in which to create his new altar. The butterfly effect this creates causes a new branch of his life to be created, and the new Yan, having made that decision to stand up and do something to save his mother, is then sent on a different path in his own life, in his own alternate version of reality, I guess. He goes on to become a technician in this new life, and he comes on board and becomes part of your crew. And this is all very handy, because our ship is in some desperate need of some TLC. So here we are then, having now arrived at the deepest, most intriguing part of the entire game. Technician Yan is understandably confused, angry, anxious, and demanding answers. We are provided choices to respond, and each response has an effect on the mental state of this new altar, who is coming to terms with everything that is being presented to him. We try to reconcile by talking about mutual memories that we shared up to the point with which our lives split off into different directions, in an attempt to get him to help us out on this mission. And that, in effect, is the demo. The base building and resource management has a whiff of this war of mine about it, but... Honestly, that side of the game feels like a little bit of a sideshow, a distraction almost to what the main part of the game is going to be about, which is clearly the relationships that you'll be developing with an ever
ever-growing number of alternate yans. Each one has their own profile in the game where you can see their current state of mind and what task they're currently doing, and it is highly likely that each one of these new yans that you have will have their own personality, their own traits, their own skills and other bits and pieces, and all of these life choices that you're picking from will dictate what they are like to interact with. It's engrossing, it's interesting, and it manages to successfully do the one key thing that I really think this game is striving for, and it asks the player, what if? We've all had those moments when we think back to when we were younger, those key decisions in your life where you think, if I had done something slightly differently, where would my life have gone? What if I made a different decision at that key moment? Where would I be now? And that is the question this game asks you with this life branch system sucking you into the lore and it makes you develop a real interest and a real relationship with these protagonists. There are some other very key moments depicted in the life branch of Yan and I think what that means is is that you're likely to see some very deep, very emotional and thought-provoking conversations with your new alters and with yourself because not forgetting our Yan is also going through a lot while this is going on. He has to come face to face with the consequences of his own decisions. He is staring face to face of an alternate version of Yan where he can actually live the events of his life as if he would made those different decisions. In particular, the one about his dad. He now knows where his life would have gone had he have stood up to his dad. He now knows it was possible to do it and actually help his mum. So what he's ended up with is likely to be large feelings of shame and regret about his own actions. And this is what makes this game so very strange, but also so incredibly unique. I do not believe I've played a game quite like this. This mix of gameplay styles and genres, it's incredibly ambitious. But thanks to the mostly great voice acting, I think it absolutely nails it. It is very refreshing that in 2024, with all the negatives out there about rinse and repeat AAA games, remasters, and a general lack of creativity and innovation, that there are still games being made that can find something new, different, exciting, and unique. The altars, ladies and gentlemen, should absolutely be on your wish list, and I cannot wait for this one to drop at some point in 2024. I don't say this lightly, but I really do truly think that everything that I've seen about this game the lore, the gameplay genres, the styles, the acting, everything together, you could be looking at a very special game for 2024. I don't think this is going to win Game of the Year, but I certainly think that this is going to surprise a lot of people about how good this is. Well, there you go. I mean, that brings me to the end of a very different video, but if you like this style, let me know in the comments down below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. I've had a blast playing this game. It's the demo at time of recording this is still available on Steam, so go and check it out if it's still available and give it a go yourself, and hopefully I will have lots more steam next fest stuff to come as i'm trying to record i'm trying to build up a, a library of, uh, of steam next fest stuff that i can drip feed out onto youtube so yeah keep it locked here and i'll see you all in the next one